Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Today, my guest is YT Boone. YT is a head of thematic Asia and portfolio manager at Neuberger Berman. And today, we want to discuss investment opportunities in 5G technology. Welcome, YT. Hi. Nice to see you again. 5G telecommunications is breaking into the mass market, YT. So what is the economic dimension of this new technology? Well, there are many economic benefits of better 5G connectivity. First of all, better and faster connectivity. This will enable a lot of digital transformation to finally happen. Digital transformation in formats such as real-time automation that you know wireless connectivity can en enable. Better productivity, even virtual sessions that we're doing today. I'm actually using 5G technology to do this. And there are many more new economies like live streaming e-commerce. You know, uh, you have KOLs, you know, key opinion leaders doing, you know, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, activities virtually driving a lot of uh, sales. Uh, you can also have remote patient monitoring through 5G technologies, not to mention in the future, remote surgeries can be a possibility. So these are the power, economic powers that 5G can enable. Hi there, just a two second break. Before we continue with the video, just make sure to subscribe to our channel now to not miss out any updates. Thank you very much and enjoy the video now. Why is the technology considered so groundbreaking and in which areas will 5G lead to explosive growth and innovation? Really, you know, 5G, has a couple of very important uh, game-changing technologies, of which the most important is the real-time, super-fast response time that 5G provides. You know, you already know about the better connectivity, the ability to connect many devices, but 5G with real-time, fast response will enable a lot of digital transformation. You know, as I mentioned, remote surgeries, you cannot tolerate any single delays, you know, any 0.01 seconds of delays. And so this is the power that 5G enables. And because of this, this will drive a lot of innovations in many industries. For example, in the manufacturing industries, many uh, well-developed companies are already leveraging 5G technologies to connect sensors in factories to enable real-time automation in manufacturing. In the future, 5G will be utilized in cars to enable connected autonomous vehicles. And obviously in healthcare, there are many more uh, applications when you can connect these sensors and medical devices wirelessly. You recently launched the Innovatia 5G mutual fund. So what is the idea behind it? And why is the time perfect for such a regional 5G strategy? As you may know, you know, uh, Asia has always been at the forefront of 5G technology innovation. And in this new 5G age, uh, there are many very innovative companies in Asia. And many of them are enabling very large companies on a global scale. So there are plenty of uh, alpha generating opportunities in Asian small giants small but innovative companies, they're enabling the big giants on a global scale. And these are often uh, off the radar screen or not well known, or you know, companies that has been underappreciated. Many areas such as you know, 5G technology components, semiconductors, industrial innovations, digital lifestyle, for example, you know, Asia is at now at the forefront in terms of a lot of these innovations. So we believe this is a you know, regional strategy that is very, very uh, attractive. So especially China is considered a pioneer in 5G technology. So what are Chinese companies doing better than their international peers and what can the world learn from China? A good example, uh, which some of uh, the audiences are probably using, like TikTok. Some of these, uh, you know, short video uh, that is going viral. 
this is a great example. But uh, the Chinese companies uh, don't only just stop there. They take it to the next level. Many Chinese companies um, are now doing live streaming e-commerce. They invite key opinion leaders, internet celebrities to sell products on live sessions uh, over you know, uh, these events where you have millions of people connected and uh, you know, sharing experiences of a new product or new experience. These are, you know, very powerful. Uh, these are generating a lot of new income. Uh, these are enabling even farmers in the rural area to be able to connect to uh, their potential customers in large cities far away. That's the power of live streaming that 5G can enable. And this is already happening in China. Not to mention, you know, after selling these products online, you need to deliver them. The logistics in China today, they are all well connected with 5G technologies. That's why if there's a live streaming e-commerce session in the morning, the products can be delivered uh, before the evening. So it's a same day delivery, all enabled by 5G technologies. Thinking of China and 5G, um, immediately Huawei and the US-China trade conflict automatically comes into mind. So what role do political risks play in the technology sector in the future and what role do they play for your portfolio decisions? You know, US-China uh, conflicts is nothing new. It's been around for now many years. Within uh, our investment strategy and within a lot of the uh, areas that we're looking at, we continue to expect uh, the decoupling of the US and China technology manufacturing you know, ecosystems. We don't see this as something negative because this is part of the deglobalization trend. For example, that is why we are now seeing the US Chips Act. The semiconductor industry is decoupling, but this provides new growth opportunities in the US, in Europe, and uh, these kind of uh, decoupling drives more investments. What is interesting is that, you know, once you only have uh, a global ecosystem, now you have regional ecosystems. There will be new winners uh, that will emerge. And we look to monetize on these new shifts, these new opportunities. Uh, we no longer just invest in, say, the US or China. We invest also on a global basis as new players emerge. Of course, it's not only China. So besides China, the Innovatia 5G fund has the biggest allocation in Japan and Taiwan. So what is the competitive 5G edge of those countries? Taiwan uh, is very strong in semiconductors. Taiwan has one of the world's largest uh, semiconductor ecosystem. And uh, it is a very important semiconductor hub, and it also enables a lot of new technology innovations when it comes to 5G, when it comes to data center, and when it comes to networking. Japan is another strong uh, and very innovative hub for industrial innovations. Japan is well known for the robotics, and because of the robotics, uh, they're enabling a lot of new innovations digital transformation, specialty kind of materials are also a key DNA of the uh, you know, uh, edge of uh, Japan's technology innovation. Not only Taiwan and Japan, Southeast Asia is also a key focus of the Innovasia uh, strategy because Southeast Asia, for example, is now benefiting from the decoupling of US-China ecosystems. As US-China continues to decouple, Southeast Asia, countries such as Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand becomes a new hub for many US uh, and European companies. So this is actually you know, a good opportunity for us to uh, monetize on. Investing in 5G in Asia, which are some of your top holdings and what do you like about those stocks? There are actually quite a lot of very innovative companies and stocks in, in, in Asia. For example, in Taiwan, uh, there is a company called e -Ink. Uh, This is a company that dominates 
in the production of electronic papers. I don't know if you know, but if you go to uh, a retail store, you will start seeing price tags in electronic formats. And some of them are color. And these are all produced in Taiwan by this company called E-Ink. And they're now applying this technology into BMW's uh, cars that can uh, change colors instantly. That's the power of electronic paper. And in the future, 5G will enable more of these uh, new innovations. Japan, for example, as I mentioned, has a lot of very interesting materials, electronic materials companies. Dexerios in Japan, which used to be a spin-off, you know, it's a spin-off from Sony. They make a lot of different electronic materials for next generation displays that we will be using in our new um, tablets or PCs or even in uh, virtual reality headsets. Uh, and in Singapore, there's a company called AEM. They make robotic equipment for testing semiconductors. Uh, their customers are like Intel. And it's a small company in a small island, Singapore, but enabling a lot of very advanced uh, semiconductors on a global basis. China is also at the forefront of a lot of uh, innovations. There's a company called Jingshen uh, in China. They make solar and wafer uh, equipment. So this company is now benefiting from the boom in this industry. So there are many of these hidden gems in Asia. So this was YT Boon from Newberger Berman. Thank you very much, YT, for being with us uh, today and uh, discussing investment opportunities in the rising 5G technology market. Thank you.